Five. What time is it, Emily? It's game hey, time? Hey. What time is it? Landing time. That's what time it is. <laughs> what do you mean game time? I don't know. You threw it for a loop. I knew. That's why I didn't <laughs> tell you before I done it. Because I'm spontaneous like that. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the landing. Welcome. We are glad that you joined us here at our humble home. Casa de Pinley? Uh-huh. For lesson number 38. <coughs> 38 um, of these lessons? Yeah. That's good. That's good. I was going to say stuff, but I took the stuff off here. Okay. Well, we are on part two of our lesson on grace. 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 Grace? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to read our, our, our scripture truths and our principle? I would love to. <clears throat> principle six. Evaluate all my relationships. Offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me. And make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. Scriptural truth, happy are the merciful, Matthew 5, 7. Happy are the peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, 23, 24. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you for doing that. Yep. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> I swallowed a fly a while ago, so. He did, literally. Oh, yeah. Swallowed a fly. Oh, yeah. It was buzzing in my throat. <laughs> That's a new one. And if you can skip that, go ahead and do so. <laughs> Ooh. And so I swallowed a dead one once it was in my tea and then I wouldn't drink tea for the longest time. It was horrible. But not what? as horrible as what you went through. It's pure lean protein. It was nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to use some imagination here for a second. Okay. Pretend that you are, uh, you have a blindfold on. And you walk into a room, and these other, these other people have to direct you where to sit just by using their, their voices and directions. And you can't see anything. So you have to kind of move wherever they tell you to. Oh, watch oh, that. You're going to bump into sorry it. About that. Okay, now turn and move your legs, bend your legs. Okay, you're there all the way down. That would be difficult, right? Well, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it would be difficult to to move move around like that. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> that is true. Starts it Being says, led. blindness is an obvious limitation, mm -hmm. but each one of us has limitations. <clears throat> Things that hamper us or challenge us. What are some less obvious limitations that people have to face in life? Anxiety. Why is that a limitation? Man, there's so many people that, that let fear stop them. Mm -hmm. And anxiety is just a fear of something. And, uh, you know, it may be that you don't go on a uh, hunt you would like to go on because it's in a different state. And some people get, uh, like, unobvious about them if you're in their comfort zone. But if they were to have to go somewhere that they're not comfortable with, that would make them almost just shut them down. Mm -hmm. Or some people see that in, in work. You know, some people can't work that have severe anxiety because it's not where they feel comfortable, so it shuts them down. Mm -hmm. I mean, ministry, service, I mean, there's so many things that it just brings an extreme amount of fear upon you where you can't operate. But it's not obvious when you're in their comfort zone. Right. You, you think, man, <clears throat> that Bobby's just got it all together. He's funny. He's lighthearted. That's because you see him in his comfort zone. But you put him outside of it, and he, you're like, what's wrong with Bob? Yeah. It's anxiety. See, it's less obvious. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Um, depression is another That's one. That's exactly right. It's not, not super obvious, but it can be a limitation. Well, absolutely. And, you know, we know that that's a hidden one, too, because... I mean, look at, like, I always think of Robin Williams when I think of depression for some reason. And he's one of the funniest guys you, you knew. I mean, he was the genie, for crying out loud, on Aladdin. I mean, funny. He was funny. Just a funny guy. Just a, seems like such a good spirit. 
but he battled so desperately, but you couldn't see it. What he showed the world and what was seen there, I mean, he was limited by, obviously in a lot of ways, because he took medications that, that you know, substances he shouldn't, you know what I'm saying? But depression can limit you because it goes hand in hand a lot of times with anxiety. But it also can cripple you in the, in the fact that you just don't want to go, yeah, don't the, want the to no move. motivation yeah. to, yeah. I mean, it's, it's easy, you know, one of the, the greatest <clears throat> um, treatments for depression is exercise, moving your body. It increases the endorphins in your brain. But when you're depressed and you don't have the motivation to do the things that... It's the hardest thing to right, do. Right. It's yeah. the hardest thing to do, to do the things that you know will help you. That's a limitation. The same with anxiety. Worst case scenario is to do what I don't want to do. Yeah. I mean, that's worst case scenario. Well, those are some very good examples. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to listen to a story now about a blind man. And as, he, as Bobby's reading it, remember that we all have things that we wish... That we could change about ourselves. We all have limitations and we're all in need of God's grace. So Bobby would you read Mark 10 uh, verses 46 through 48? Yep. <clears throat> but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it is for those let me make sure Mark 10 right? Mark 10 46 yep. through okay. 48. 46 through 48 that's why. Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. Okay, so Barnabas <clears throat> asks Jesus for mercy. Um, what does mercy mean to you? Well, I mean, it's somebody not giving me what I deserve. Say I... It's just like, you know, I, I was watching a deal today, actually. I, I was going to talk about, like, I robbed somebody, but there was a, a gentleman that had killed uh, another kid. He was just a kid. They were in the courtroom, and uh, he smiled whenever the sentence was as severe, and, and the judge got mad and told him, you know, I have half a mind to waive that and, you know, give you a stiffer sentence. And he said that he had smiled out of nervousness, you know what I mean? Like, but anyway, the point being is they got with the other side's lawyer, the the with the that represented that gentleman that, or the young kid that was his life was taken, and they said no, don't do that. That they wanted to forgive him and just get past this. That's mercy. When something has been taken from you like that, that's mercy, you know. So mercy to me is being on the other side where I have wronged someone and I truly deserve what's coming to me, the judgment coming to me, so much so that I don't even expect it not to. Like, I know it's coming. I know I did it. But for somebody to come say, no, I forgive you, that's mercy. It's good. I also think of uh, compassion. It's kind of the same thing. It is. Like you're, you're having compassion on uh, on another person that you don't have to. What? <laughs> okay. Um, now it says Bartimaeus was determined to see Jesus. Why do many people decide to just live with their limitations instead of stopping at nothing to get whole or healed? Comfort zone. Familiar spirits. Familiar, it's just <clears throat> the same reason a, a, a prisoner can be locked up for 20 years and then when they're set free, they don't know how to operate. Because I've learned how to operate in my parameters. Right. But I don't know how to operate in my freedom. Yep. 
So right. they'll do something and get put right back in because it's a familiar place. Yeah, it's what they're most comfortable yep. with. Okay, go ahead and finish uh, read Mark 10, 49 through 52. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, <clears throat> What do you want me to do for you? Well, the blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may have may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. So it's obvious that Bar what Bar Bartimaeus wants. So why did Jesus basically require him to state the obvious? Why did Jesus have Bartimaeus tell him in his own words that he wanted to be healed? Just kind of like whenever he, he asked, the, wasn't it the leper, will thou be made whole, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's an outward confession. Yeah. It, it's saying, I take a stand. Yes, I want this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's recognizing your limitation. Yeah, that I can't do it. Knowing that Jesus is the one that can help you with that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's almost the symbolic way of Jesus would ask them that because he wanted them to give it to, to him. Mm -hmm. Like, give it to me and I'll make you with you and I'll make you whole. So he, he, you have to give it to him before he can do anything about it, right? Right. Well, he says Bartimaeus is free to go, but he decides to follow Jesus instead. Why? Now, there's, there's a lot of different ways, but a lot of times... We feel indebted. Yeah. When somebody does something for me, like I've had people give me things, and then I will look to try to find something to give them back. Yeah. And they're like, don't do that. Or if somebody help you financially, you're like, hey, I can come over and help you move that so-and-so. Or I, I don't want you to help me. Don't do that. We feel like we owe because we were shown mercy and we're taught in this life that nothing's given to you, that everything is earned. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you may want to follow him to, to earn, to pay back the gift, to show. But a lot of times it's not just because we owe, but we want to show appreciation. We're so grateful for what you did for me. I want to show you how much I appreciate you by following you and helping you. It says, notice that Jesus heals him and tells him to go. No strings attached. Sometimes we think we have to earn Jesus' favor to get his mercy, like, like Bobby said. But instead, he gives us undeserved kindness. We don't have to pay him back for what he's done for us. His grace is a free gift, and he wants our response to be something we offer freely. It's an example for us on how to give, too. Yeah. Jesus isn't asking just Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? He's asking us all the same question. Mm -hmm says, Jesus wants to heal us, to give us the grace we need to experience a right relationship with him. He wants a relationship with us. However, his grace is free. It isn't something that we can earn. God loved you and me while we were still out there sinning. Romans 8, or 5, 8 says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. We can, in turn, love others because God first loved us. We can also forgive others because God first forgave us. Colossians 3.13 says, Be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges and remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Amen. Amen. That's right. I want to always be merciful. Yes. Because I was shown mercy. Yes. I want to be graceful because I was shown grace. And it's... Uh, it's not always easy, but when we operate in it, when that becomes who we are, whenever we fully receive it, we fully accept it, because mm -hmm. we're given it. So it's like operating in that grace. So he's fully graceful. He gives it to me, but it's up to me to receive that inside. Mm -hmm. So then when I receive it, then I give it. So it's like this unending chain of operating in grace and mercy follows that too. So, I mean, it's not always easy. I mean, you can ask my wife, Cut me off in traffic or don't let me out and see how it makes me feel. You know what I mean? I don't go, bless their heart. <laughs> you that stupid. I can <laughs> Can't stand rudeness. I like a cat and call. I don't like rudeness in the man. I won't tolerate it. All right. 
Let's read the serenity prayer, honey. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. See you next week. Yeah. What are we going to talk about next week? Um, let me guess. What, what, what? We are on... Purple dolphins. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I missed it. I know that couldn't be it. Um, spiritual jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Choke codes for the devil. That would be an awesome lesson, for sure. But we're talking about crossroads. I, I was that next close, week. wasn't I? Uh -huh. Then we're almost the same you thing. Were super close. I knew it. You almost had it. I knew it. Thank Love you guys. for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye.